how's it going people welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the forever arsenal podcast apologies for the little delay on it usually it's out bright and early the next day after a result but we couldn't get it done lee was in munich um so we're recording it real late well it's either real late on a thursday night or real early on a Friday. Well, early yeah yeah you can look at it either way either way and um, we're here we're here to talk about the result uh, not the result we wanted. We're out of the Champions League. Um, and it kept off a, a horrid seven days, really. Um, one that sees, you know, the season unraveling. Um, and much to, to talk about, much to debate. Um, obviously, welcoming back the usual James, Lee, Judges and Jordan. And I'm going to head straight to Lee. You went over to Munich, Lee. Um, none of us predicted a loss. All of us still had strong hope that we would go through. But in the end... We wimpled out a little bit. Hold on. I, I predicted a loss. Oh, did, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you did 2-1. Oh, you did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah. I always, um, I always felt that there was a chance we'd lose this game. I, I did. Um, and I, I, I'll be really honest. I, <laughs> the, the, the closer it got to the game and when I was at the stadium, I did fancy we might actually uh, get a result. But um, I think really looking back on it, um, just didn't do enough over over both games. I, I felt tactically um, found out a little bit. But I also think that tactically, I thought that Mikel done okay in this game. Defensively, I felt that we really had a... Had a I, I didn't feel that we was under the pump that much, if I'll be honest. But... Um, I think what he's got to work out is it's okay having that defensive structure, but you've got to have something going forward as well. And I don't think that's what we had really over there. Like I didn't think we, um, I think our our attack was nullified by our defensive shape and everything like that. You know, we did our full forward players never got into the game, never got into the game. Now you can say they had poor nights or it was the system or whatever. That is the one thing that I I take from it. I, I I take positives and I take negatives. The negatives, obviously, were out and we probably um, could have could have maybe had a chance of um, beating Bayern Munich. I didn't think that they was anything better than us. I just think that they was just more experienced than us um, in, in the Champions League and everything there. Um, and the positive I take from it is that we competed um, over the two games. I think, realistically, we need to win your home games at this level. Um, and, um, like, listen, I think that some of the things that have been thrown at Mikel and, and the team over these this last couple of days is just, <laughs> we're back, boys, because <clears throat> I haven't seen, um, you know, we bottled it against Bayern Munich, apparently, like, you know, a Tottenham fan saying, we bottled it against Bayern Munich, the worst Bayern Munich team they've ever seen. You know, um or the, the the worst, the weakest Bayern Munich, the weakest Bayern Munich team that your best player decided to go and play for and leave you. You know what I mean? Things like that. And and, and the other thing is, you know, didn't Manchester City bottle it? Then if if it, if we bottled it, did Manchester City bottle it? Uh, you know, I haven't seen that game. Um, but for me, disappointment that we we gone out. And do you know what? I'm going to say. I'll say this. If we'd have beaten Aston Villa on the weekend, I think there'd have been a lot more positive stuff going into to it than negative stuff. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, it's, we're crumbling now. We're doing this. We're doing that. If we'd have beaten Aston Villa and and lost the games behind me, I think a lot more fans would have gone. Do you know what? We we give it a good go against Bayern, Bayern, but now we can concentrate on the league. You know, and we've got six cup finals and everything like that. But because we lost on Sunday. It's put a lot of doubts in that. And one of the reasons that I think that we lost on Sunday is because we didn't know how to navigate our way through this semi, uh, this quarterfinal with that Aston Villa game in between. So I just think, like, inexperience through this whole week has cost us a little bit, like, you know. On the pitch or off the pitch? That's a good question. I think um, definitely on the pitch. And I think a little bit off the pitch as well. I think that... Um, um, I, I don't. I, it's a real difficult one, because I, 
I think if we played Ashton, for, forget if we didn't have that court final in between, I think we'd have, we've approached, approached Ashton, the Ashton Villa game a little bit different. I felt that maybe we have one eye still on that game. And I, I think it's really natural. I think as fans did as well. I, I, I think I did. I thought like, you know, well, who are we going to play on the on the weekend so that we're fresh for the Wednesday and whatever? I don't know. I don't know. I, I felt that I don't know how you guys felt about it, but like being over there, you you, you felt that it, it was a bigger game, different game to what the Europa League was, and I think it was even a different to the game against Porto. You know, I I, I just felt that it was. Um, I, I see him with our defending as well. Like, you know, Gabriel's been solid as a rock and there was a couple of little frailties in his game, you know, the back pass and the thing like that. And the goal that we conceded, guys, you know what I mean? Oh, we wouldn't have conceded that in the Premier League. I don't I don't know. I, I think we've just been found wanting a little bit in this competition as, as it's got to the nitty gritty. And uh, we haven't been great in the whole competition all the way through. A few people have had a little dig at that. Um you know, and I, I, at this stage, I'm going to be really... I don't really want to be slagging off the team and slagging off the manager and all that, like, you know. We've still got um, work to do. Um, it ain't... It, you know, it could still be a great season for us. And why people are saying now, you know, um, we need a new manager and this manager's not going to take us over the line and things like that. He's a Brendan Rogers and all this sort of stuff. I get what they're saying, but at the end of the day, we've still got six games left. And, if, you know, let's see what happens in, in those games. Yes, if we lose on, on Saturday, I can understand then a lot of um, of that sort of stuff. But I didn't think we was that bad. That first half again, I thought we played really well first half. I, I was buzzing the way we played in first half. Martinelli should have scored. Um, but we just faded in the second half. And I just think that... Bayern Munich just had a little bit more guile, a little bit more experience than us. And I think that ultimately got them over the line. Fine margins, it really was. It wasn't a lot in it. And um, if I'll be really honest, at the end of it, which I, I'm, I can't believe I am saying, I think they defended better than us. And that's what ultimately cost us. That's fair. I think that's a, that's a fair statement. Um James, well, Jordan, let's let's hear from you. Me and James, um, we watched it together, so <laughs> we'll give our views next. But yeah, um, Lee's had his say um, on my part. Surprisingly, mellow. Maybe it's the time of night we're recording, but um, Lee's more so looking at the positives. You know, I was more angry on Sunday than I was yesterday. Yesterday, yeah, I was too. Yeah, I was. Mm. I, I, I think that's about. Mm, yeah. No, go on, go on, I think mine was a bit different. I think after Villa, I wanted to, I was hesitant because I, I thought to myself, if we go and beat Bayern or, and get through against, you know, Bayern in Munich, then as much as it's, it's affected our title race, we will forget about that result. But we, we doubled down or tripled down mm. on the poor, poor results. I, I would have preferred, three, if, you did, if it was a choice, I would have preferred three points at Villa and go out the Champions League if, if it was... A super, you know, a, a, a kind of either raw sort of thing. Um, I think Lee talks a lot of sense. I think Lee says a lot of things that I agree with. Um, obviously disappointing to go out the Champions League, but one of the few things that Lee said there that I do agree with, we've not been good in Europe this year. We've, we've not been good in Europe this year. We, we've kind of muddled our way through. Um, but I, I don't think we've been particularly brilliant in the Champions League this season, especially away. Our, our away performances in the Champions League this season have been really, really, really poor, um, in my opinion. Um, I think perspective is is, is needed. Um, the way we went out was disappointing. I don't think we really gave it everything. Um, or maybe we did. Maybe we did. And, and maybe we have to just kind of be at peace with the fact that that's in the European perspective. That's where we are. We've been out of this for a long time. I did think that the, the English team should get to the semis at least with the resources, the money, the managers um, that the English teams have. I, I think England English teams have done awful in Europe across the board, personally, but that's mm. a different discussion. But um, but when you really think who City and Arsenal went out to, all right, it's not a great Bayern Munich team, but it's still Bayern Munich. So that's probably the one consolation. He went out earlier than we should have, but 
at least it was to a European giant. Um, I think from here on in Turkish, for me, I look at four things. If you know, moving forward, I think to for, for us to really get to be one where we want to be, four things are needed. I think one, an upgrade in personnel. I think we need a, the, the level and quality of player. I think this summer is going to be a big discussion, and, and we're seeing reports about links with, with players at the moment and we'll have that discussion I'm sure during the summer second I think is the continued evolution and improvement on Mikel Arteta because I think year on year he is improving but I think he's got to improve again I think he's got to learn and, and go up another level next season um, I think the third point is, an is a change in mentality I think this team needs a change in mentality I'm disappointed in some of those some of those big players in that performance both performances against Villa and, and Bayern um, you know, Declan Rice has been phenomenal this phenomenal this, this this season. He's been poor the last two games. And I know we love Declan Rice, but I'm sorry, you're a hundred million pound player. You're a hundred million pound player. And let's be brutal. When you're paying that kind of money, it's for these games. It's for these games. Um, but Kaya Saka, Starboy, we all love him. We won't do the whole world class debate now. We'll have that another time. It's for these games. We're looking for you to step up. Martinelli, I'm sorry. All season, I know he's had injuries. It's these games. These are the games where we need the guys that we are gassing up and talking up to step up. And I think the fourth and final thing is us, the fans. And it's really, really, really interesting hearing Lee, what Lee's saying and also Lee's tone because I think we have to stick with the team. The season's not over yet. See, the season's not done. We have to fight and we have to push on and we have to dust ourselves down and go again. I think the fans have got to be there for the club because when we do win a Premier League title, and it will happen, it, it's, it's going to happen, we need to look back on these years and like, you know what? We were pissed that time we did that podcast after Bayern knocked us out. But you know what? We stuck with the team. We went again. It, and it, and it, it feels all the sweeter when, when you do that as well. So I think those are the four elements that I'm looking going forward. I think just final point on the, on the game itself and kind of where we are in Europe, it was a reminder and a humbler that and I, I use the word often as well, seasoned. I just think there's something about Europe that you just can't buy. I think you have to go through these experiences. You have to learn the hard way sometimes. You have to gain that 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 knowledge of not only playing in 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 the Champions League, but juggling the Champions League and the Premier League. Because there's a school of thought that if we had have uh, gone out to Porto, do we lose to Villa? I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure we do. So, But if you want to be a big boy at the big table, you have to learn to get something at Villa and then go again against Bayern Munich four days later. So I think there's a, there's a learning there for Arsenal in our European evolution. Um, we've got no European pedigrees. I think year on year, we have to go for these lessons to kind of get better. But overall, disappointed. But, uh, you know, I, I, th I think it was a reminder of kind of we're good and we're improving but we're not quite good enough yet. We're not quite ready. James, over 24 yeah. hours since we watched it. Um, how are you feeling about it now? Very tired. <laughs> um, I, I've, I've been critical of Mikel Arteta in particular for the exit. Um, and I do think we should explore what he and we could have done better as a team. Um, but I do actually just want to carry on that kind of this theme of uh, stick by the team, they need us kind of thing, because um, I don't see a team that's, I was about to say that's not giving their all. I know the way the Villa and buying games ended, they, they didn't look like they were throwing the kitchen sink at it and doing everything, but I don't believe this is a team that isn't trying. I believe that is a team that, you know, ran out of ideas or gassed out or, maybe tactically got something wrong that didn't allow us to play much better than we did. Like, like Jordan said, maybe they did give it their all and actually that's just all we had left. I, I don't know. So so I, I think we're right to try to stick by the team. A, because I think they're trying. They've earned that. B, because there's six games to go with two points off City and we could win the league. But actually three, and I'm going to make this my big point. Forget just we're fans and that's what fans do. Um, we haven't been a disgrace in these last three games. We haven't. I look at that Bayern home leg and we made errors. We could have been, we could, not could, should, should have been 2 0 up uh, with that Ben White chance in the first 20 minutes. That might have been the tie. Probably not, but it might, that might have been 
the Bayern weren't a great attacking threat over two legs, mm. um, despite the players they've got. Um, so I think regret that we didn't take opportunities then. Villa, again, that first half, brilliant. I almost think that was some of the best football we played this season, that first 45 minutes. Second half was the worst. It was awful. We were totally bopped at home. And then the first 45 minutes at the Allianz, I think there were, there were loads of... Um, positives in the way we quieted them down we got on the ball we played our football I thought we were gonna park the bus and invite them on and try hit them on the counter a little bit not that we've ever really done that under Arteta but you know kind of Etihad style but actually we didn't we we went to play and we didn't do that recklessly conceding load of chances Kane had a chance early on but then the better chances fell to Martinelli um so we haven't disgraced ourselves in these three games it's just that we are doing that thing where we go three games without a win and it happens at this particular point in the season and the word bottle thrown around and that might be fair. And, um, you know, all eyes are on Arsenal, why they can't deliver when it really matters. And these are all fair questions. I'm not saying they're not. Um, but I think a big reason to stick behind the team is because they're not actually playing terribly. Um, and we need them to play like they did against Villa in the next six games. And I think we win the next six if we play like that for the, for the first half anyway, hoping you get those goals you deserve and maybe there's something to protect. So maybe I'm being too hopeful there, but I, I, I do agree with the sentiment that we really need to kind of like keep hope. And then when it's all over, then we can really kind of go into the nuts and bolts of what went wrong. Um, but I but I do agree with what you guys are saying. Like There's still a lot of football to play and I don't think we're in terrible shape going into it. I don't think now's the time to rip the team apart. I, 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 to what Lee said earlier on, there's a lot of fans that are doing the whole Arteta right thing and are doing the whole, we're just not good enough, he's got to go. And I just get a sense that those are the same fans that have been waiting for a, an excuse to come out and say those sorts of things. And I've always said, if you don't think Arteta's the guy and you don't think he's good enough, that's fine. But these was, a lot of these people are the same people that were saying six months ago that he's the third best manager in the league. There was it's, these are the same people that were saying six months ago that he is the guy. So I've just got no time for those people that come with that energy. I think to what James says, I think that I think there's criticisms that should be la laid at his door and the players as well. We can get into that. He's not getting a free pass from me, but I just I'm just not at the place where maybe because it's one twenty two in the morning. I'm just not at the place where I'm going to be letting it you know go, going for him because I think that it's undeniable he's getting better. Is he good enough to be? Is he good enough to take us where we want to be? That's a fair discussion. That, that, but, are that we, is but are we getting better? Well, we clearly are getting better. The trajectory year on year is 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 is, is going upwards. And Jordan, that people want to do a either or. Basically, we lost. So we, are we going to basically tear the team apart for it, or are you back in no matter what? And there's that middle line where mm. I don't feel like you said like tearing this team a new one. Um, but at the same time, my fan cam, I vented a lot on Tactical Insight. I vented a lot on DR Sports Roundup. I vented a lot because I do think Arteta has got things wrong in this. So while, while I'm also willing to kind of rally around the team and know that we've got a lot of football to play, I think there's a lot he got wrong in the second halves of these games in particular. And you saw where Tuchel and Emery, especially when it comes to in-game management, just showed their experience and their class yeah. and their quality, and he didn't react well enough. Um, a lot of that for me was down to the substitutions. Anyone who watched Tactical Insight, I'll, I'll be boring you more than I bore Lee when he watches it anyway. But um, it just was how a manager, what do I know that Arteta, you know, doesn't, right? But how a manager looks at us playing through Jorginho all game and goes, I'm taking him out the team when we need to actually get on the ball more. Like it's little things like that. I found really, really puzzling about Arteta. Um, and he does, he does for me, take some blame. I think, I think a lot of people on Arteta on, sorry, on Saka and Martinelli for not showing up in these games and fair enough, they didn't, but they've played an insane amount of football in the last three, four years with no real depth and cover and quality behind them. And so we've needed to play them. 
And so maybe this isn't so fair on Martinelli that injury, so he's been in and out with Trossard. But Saka in particular, I just can't I can't bring myself to to go in on him. He was poor again. The quick free kick, stupid idea. The corner, awfully executed. But the guy has been playing so much football. His defensive numbers compared to most wingers are right up there. They shouldn't be because we're one of the most attacking teams in the league. He shouldn't be doing this much defending, but he does. And then he plays and he gets kicked and then he limps off and then he starts the next game. And it's been relentless. And he goes off injured against Tottenham and against Bournemouth and then against Lons for the third time in a row. And then guess what? We don't have him for City. It, there's just been trends that I think Arteta really could have done better with, not just in these 90 minutes against Bayern, but actually in the season in terms of managing minutes. So he, he gets criticism from me for sure. Um, but, you know, it's I'm, I'm, I'm just trying I'm, to be fairly soft with it. I'm with you on that, but the criticism won't come until what happens at the weekend. Now, if, if, for instance, we don't win at Wolves and then we maybe draw with Chelsea and then lose to Spurs and all that. Then a hundred percent that you know, then you've got to look at it and go, when you when you say, Oh, we are improving, are we improving? When it matters, we're not, because two years ago we had the chance of top four and it and it and, and we, we didn't see it over the line. Last yeah, season we, we 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 was in a position we didn't see it over the line. If it was to happen again this season, don't see it over the line. I think now for Arteta to get no criticism criticism this season and and me as a fan to say right you're the man you go on there and win these next six games whatever happens you go and win these six games it might not be enough but you go and win them and give me the confidence to say do you know what you are the man because there's going to be a lot of talk if he doesn't and and and, and if we capitulate again and crumble and whatever then there's got to be serious questions asked so for me, I think he's he's got to really show his managerial skills and now in these next two games because they're still hard to navigate. Wolves away and then um, Chelsea at home is going to be very, very difficult. And then after oh, that, God. you think it's going to get even harder with the, the Tottenham game. But I, I expect him and Arsenal and those players to win their next six games. I really oh, do. Right. And, and if they don't, let, 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 let the criticism begin, and, and and rightly so, and rightly so. Then the bottle job tag and that sort of, you know, that narrative of Trump's when Trump. the going gets tough, you can't handle it. Yeah. Listen, that'd be three years in a row of evidence, and that can't, we can't escape. I, 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 I agree with Lee 100%. I, I've been saying the same thing. I think I'd be judging Arteta on how we finish the season. <clears throat> That's how, and, and I, I felt that way before the Villa defeat. For me, it was all about how do we finish the season? we can finish third and finish two points off the top. Is that a failed season? Is that, is that a failure? If we came third, two points off the, off the top of the league, I'm, I'm not sure. It, I'm not sure it is really. But for me, it's about if we implode from here on in, if we collapse and if we tail off and finish 11 points off the top, there's massive questions then for Mikel Arteta. I'm a big Arteta fan. You guys know that. Everybody knows that, Right. But no one gets a free pass. Everyone can get it. <laughs> Everybody can get it from me. I, I don't have to, I don't know these people, right? Do your job. Just do your job. I'm a fan of his. But if he's if he if he implodes, as Lee said, there will be a pattern. There will be a pattern under Arteta that at the back end of the season, when it really matters, not even losing a game, because you can lose a game in the run-in. It's about how you respond. It's if you lose a game, then you draw, then you draw. Then you lose, then you win, then you draw. That's not the form I want to see from a, from a manager at Arsenal Football Club. How much run. does how, how much does the variable that is age come into this then? I, 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 in well, terms of what we need, or no, people should know. I'm not here to make excuses for 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 anyone when I feel like criticism is necessary, and I feel like you know criticism is necessary for the last three games more so than James Lee and, and, and Jordan do but um, in terms of what we're saying now and and you know Arteta back end of the season there's other variables there that you could attribute to such failure at the back end so my question is how much do you think those variables have played a part because then an argument could be that you know it, it's still a young side and, and being a young side 
you need to get the experience of this in order to similar to what you said about Champions League. Now this ain't me making yeah. excuses. What it is is because I, I still think that's on Arteta because I think last summer it was a poor transfer window. We, might, we 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 can talk about that here as well. I think we are deep enough into the season. We we've seen enough, regardless of us winning the league or not. If we win the league, we win the league. It doesn't make last season some um summer window an all round success, in my opinion. Mm. Obviously, it will, it, you know people will will attribute it to that as well. But the reality is, Turkish the reality is right, and I, I I'm I'm not going to go down this route yet. But Jordan's gone on it a little bit, like you know what I mean. That the the three major signings have fouled over these last three games. Declan Rice hasn't been good enough in these 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 real crunch games. Raya has, has let us down in in particularly in the home game. Uh and and Kai Havertz, I didn't even know he was playing the other night. You know, they're 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 the three players that have come into the side to get you over the line. If 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 you want to be like from from last season to this season. That's mm -hmm. the and and you're right in what you're saying. Declan Rice was, I don't think he was helped by um, tactical stuff on 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 Sunday. But let's let's not make no excuses. You know, let's have no more excuses. No more. You know, didn't perform in the three games. If I'll be really honest, particularly in the Champions League, I don't think he, he's had his best games. And I, I, I hate to say that. Kai Havertz, I've been, I've been bigging him up and all that, like, you know, I've been found wanting the last three games when it's really mattered. He's been found mm. wanting. Honest. And I also think Raya has as well. Mm. I think when it's mattered, is, has he pulled out a blinding save to get us out of it? No. Has he made mistakes? Yes. And I think that that, is the problem at the moment, like, you know, so there's going to be questions and, and listen, that can all be forgotten about if he gets the results and gets these wins and we go on and win the league. So this is so, so vital, these next couple of games. Uh, really, you know, you know what the big question is, though, and what I was leading on to, Lee, because I agree with you and you agree with me. The big question is, the, the reason I brought that up, that variable up is because, Firstly, I want to say it's not an excuse because Arteta is the reason that variable is what it is right now for us, one of the mm. youngest teams. But the reality is, if we really take a step back, I think right now we're in a place where the emotional roller coaster of winning so many games back to back, leading the race, and you know, you're you're very much involved. Now I feel like after a few losses, you know, we can be a bit more objective, maybe. <clears throat> we don't have the necessary quality in my opinion, to, to be as, to, to be this competitive. But we are. And I think the reason we are is because of Mikel. But then the reason that we seem to fail is because of Mikel, which is the, the emphasis on the, the trust on like the Eddies and the Smith Rose and the, the, the signings of maybe a Vieira or a Lokonga or a whoever over the years. He needs to get that right now. And, and the big question is, because it's been a question mark over his head since Ozil, since Oba, because I do feel like that the, the sorts of players we need, maybe one or two of them, will be the characters as well that people will think can Arteta handle that character. Uh, is, is it time for that now? Because I feel oh, like I feel like it is. We need a bit of superstar quality in this side now. I I I, I go on, Lee, go on. No, I was just gonna say I, I get what you're saying there, but you know, Pep's had all of those things. Well, that's what I was going to say. I, that's I, Real Madrid and foul then. You know what I mean? Like, I, 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 I get that. But, you know, if you say if, 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 if it was Mikel, like you go, well, you've bought that top, top goal scorer. He didn't perform in, in, in the game when it really mattered. Uh, you've let um, Carl Palmer go, one of the best English young players, and replaced him with Daco, and it hasn't, what, Doco or whatever his name is, and it hasn't worked. Um, and you know, like, and I, I think to myself, from, Jeez, from sensation, but, okay. but, but, um, but what I'm saying is that you know, he's made mistakes as well. You know, what I mean, I, 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 you know, is is it just about that? I think that there is okay, but but if I can jump in right and actually <clears throat> turn it up on Arteta a little bit, it's of course, we all know Pep's earned the right to make mistakes because of what he's achieved in the well, game. Why, why 
Of course. Okay, but there's two things. Mikel uh, is more than... A, he's a human. Of course he can make errors. Like, of course he can. And he's going to, and he'll make many more. I'm saying he can't. But we are right to have legitimate questions when something crosses that line of like, this is really far, like far-fetched in thinking. This is really, and I'm talking coach. Let me give the example I mean, and it is Kai Havertz. Now, I'm actually beyond really being critical of Kai Havertz as the individual. The guy works hard. I can't ask him to do much more than he's trying to do. He's trying to work hard. He's getting stuck in. He doesn't shy away. And he'll play any position you ask him. I, that's like, I'm not having a go at him. But I do think that Mikel Arteta had the big summer where 160, 170 million pounds went on midfielders. Originally, before he became a strike, 170 million pounds went on two midfielders, which we needed. And one of them, we don't really think as a midfielder. He certainly isn't an orthodox midfielder, actually wants the ball to his feet. So we'll put him up front. And he's actually done a pretty good job there, to be fair. But he's pretty good enough. Do we all want Kai Havertz to lead the line for 38 games next season in the Premier League? I think the Arsenal fan base would mostly all go no. Um, so sure. £65 million went on a player that we actually don't really know where his best position is. And and do you know what? It was entirely predictable. When those links came out about Kai Havertz, everyone went, we don't really know what he does. His three years at Chelsea weren't great. Not sure what his best position is, what his best attribute is. Now, what the reason I'm saying all this before everyone goes, oh, here we go, a couple of bad games, you know, back on him. No, because I was very praising. It wasn't that long ago. He was brilliant at Brighton, man of the match, and deservedly so. It's not a couple of games anyway. It's the majority of the season. But cool. Fair enough. Know, yeah. yeah. Fair enough. But but my thing is when we're talking about Arteta making mistakes as well, like these are that's a big one, 65 million for a lack of clarity in one player and one signing. And we can't actually afford basically any more of those. The next 65 million pound player has to be a difference maker, has to be a has to be a complete game changer like Declan Rice has been. And they've got to have a very clear part to play in this squad. It's not in this 11, in this team, in, in uh, one sole position. And uh, that's where I go about the mistakes. Like that was a, I'm not saying it was a mistake because he's, well, maybe it was. I, we still got more to see. I just. I'm not buying the, that, James. I'm not buying that. I'll tell you what. What do you, what dis what do you disagree with? with? I, I do disagree with that, like, you know, because, and, I, and I'll tell you what, it, you know, um, listen. I, there was a time when I wasn't the biggest fan of Mikel, but he's won me over. And I feel like over the last couple of years, right, we are challenging for the title. He got no divine... That that was a that was a, a big thing a couple of years ago. You know, if you'd have said two years ago, Arsenal are going to win it, you'd have been rinsed for it. Like, you know what I mean? Clipped and rinsed for it. We are genuinely title contenders now. And, and the Kai Havertz one... I, I don't think that that's. I, I, if, if you look on it, is it is it been a failure? I don't think it has. I don't know if it. But I tell you what has been a failure. I tell you what has been a failure. Thirty-five million on people like Vieira, and that's never never playing. You know what I mean? That's the sort of ones that I'm looking at now. Like you, you spend thirty-five million on. But they can Vieira. both be failures, Lee. They can so, both be failures. They can both be failures. Yeah, but I don't think Kai Havertz has been a failure this season. He's not been a success, has, man. I, I, I don't think he has. I think he that hasn't he's been, he hasn't been. He hasn't been. He hasn't been. Where everybody was no one. No one was saying that he wasn't. We've had three poor performances, uh, and I, I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna say yes. He was poor on um, on Wednesday, um, but, but but so was the other the other two. And I'm gonna put this to you now. When the two substitutes come on, they was just as poor as well. So is it not? Is it not? No, but I, no, no, but I mean, yes, I, yes. Sorry to cut you, John. No, no. I just want to touch on that. Sorry, Lee. Just because, yeah, that's why I'm removing the blame on Kai Havertz himself. Like when the change was made against Bayern, he was in midfield at that point, but he was basically playing on the last man. Like he's clearly told to stand there. So it's not just like what Kai can offer because. I was complimentary of his first 45 against Villa. I thought he played quite well. No one else seemed to think that. I, I liked his first 45 minutes against Villa, but he, like, 
Arteta doesn't have a very clear plan from what I can see for what he definitely wants to do with him. Now, you say Fabio Vieira, but clubs can get £35 million signings wrong. But this summer, we had £200 million go on four players. And we might go have put another four hundred million on apparently a left back, another midfielder, a striker, and a winger. We can't get any of them wrong. Well, we I, we really can't. I, I get what you're saying, James, and, and, and I've got to bring this in there. One of the reasons that we've done well over this last five, six, four, five months, also, and the way we're playing at the moment is because we've got a stopgap of a midfield player as well. That's got to be addressed. You know what I mean, Jorginho. I thought he was brilliant. I thought he played really well yesterday, but he hasn't. Well, got, he hasn't got the legs. He hasn't got the mobility. He hasn't got what we need from. We need a young version of that, like you know what I mean. If I'll be honest, but we stopped gap for. When did we buy him in January last season? We gone through the whole you summer. Lead. Do you know Jorginho has played this much because Havertz is a failure? Fact. Mm, the midfield is meant to be Rice, Havertz, Odegaard. That was meant to be the midfield. I'm not saying... Uh, I'm, not well, having, like, uh, yeah, he's want, I'm not too sure if it was. I, I think that... I think, if I'll be really honest with, with uh, Havertz, if, if you want to say what it was, I think he was bought as a player that can play in multiple positions. So instead of like buying a 65 million or 80 million pound that's the number eight position. I think there's one that he can play here and he can play there. I, sometimes I think that can go for you and sometimes it can go against you. Yeah. And I think that's what that, 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 that to me is what it, it, it is. Well, when I look at that, I think that, that that's okay if you're going to spend that money, but you've got, you, you know, you, you're buying other players that haven't, you know, like, unfortunately, but, but sorry, Lee, for, 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 I, I I think for a lot of 2024, it's worked for him, the Havertz thing. I think we've clearly played our best football when he's been up front over Jesus. I agree with that. I've been praising him for having a more almost professional mentality and approach to the game um, than sort of other options up front. And I've given him a lot of credit in, in this calendar year because I think he's deserved it, Kai Havertz. But when you talk about getting players that can play in multiple positions, I've just never known ever, and tell me in the comments if I'm wrong, of a player that is a box to box slash target man nine, like Alexis McAllister as a six, but maybe an eight. Uh, De Bruyne, Bernardo Silva, eights, but maybe tens. Foden is maybe a ten, but maybe wide. I've never known, like Granite Xhaka at no point last season would we have put him up front. Now I know that that's, a, I'm being hyperbolic, but do you get my point? Like, it's oh, such oh, a oh, contrast oh, in how you use him that that suggests a complete lack of real clarity in what we want to do. So, so, but, but uh, I can I can hear the comments already now going. Why are you spending so long talking about Kai Havertz? Because I'm I'm like I said, I'm sort of done blaming him. I think he's doing what he's been asked to do, and he's given it his all. I just think that come this summer, and where I think Arteta does take a little bit of blame is two hundred million pounds was spent, and he had a, a good squad that he could have managed better A via signings and B via managing minutes earlier in the season so that come Bayern at this part, we were better equipped for it. So, I, and I'll, I'll get there, but I'll tell you where Arteta's made mistakes. In my opinion, where Arteta's made mistakes, right? I see a goalkeeper today that, that should still be at the Arsenal. At six o'clock to, today, I watch a goalkeeper that should still be at the Arsenal, right? Okay, Did they go through, down, Villa? So, mm. Yeah, down to him, all right? And then I went and watched the West Ham game and our team is crying out for a player that can just dictate play from where he was in that position. If he was still at this football club, I think Arsenal would... would I know like Jordan don't like him, but I do think mm. that we would have, if we if we kept him for another year, I think Arsenal would have been a much, much better side. It, 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 the way he controls games in from midfield now, I, I'm really, really impressed with his performance today and when I watched it. And do you know what about that performance today with Granit Xhaka? They were under the pump in the first half. And he, he has got the experience and know-how to, to over game and get that going through. And I just think at the end of the day, there have been mistakes made by Arteta. I really do think that they, that they have. But... My point being, so was Pep. Uh, do you imagine if we're playing and you take off, I don't know, your best two players and you lose the game? You, uh, there'd be a meltdown 
with us. That, but that's that. I, I think I think you're rightly so. Can I just go back to Turkish's and uh, point about ten minutes ago regarding Arteta <laughs> and him almost being the blessing and the curse? So he's the reason why we're challenging for the title, but he's also arguably the reason why we can't win the title. That that second part of of of, of that comment, I just want to challenge a little bit because. I, I wonder, I, th I think what you guys are saying, I think Mikel is right. Mikel Arteta's mistakes and errors, if you like, are probably more off the field than on the field. Now, I know this is a post Bayern Munich review uh, pod, but I think we will, I think we all realise that at a European scale, we're, just, we're not ready yet. So that's why we went out. We're not quite ready. So let me put that to bed. So we're talking about Mikel Arteta winning a Premier League. I wonder if the reason why, if we don't win the Premier League, we won't win the Premier League is less about... Mikel Arteta's an inability or just he's, he's just not good enough and it's more about something that we have we can't we can't ignore Pep Guardiola has a phenomenal squad Liverpool pushed that Man City team for five years and nicked one prem off them we have we can't escape the fact that Manchester City have had big games in the run-in and arguably their player of the year has been on the bench Phil Foden for some of those games Kevin De Bruyne missed two games prior to the Palace game they won a couple of weeks ago. And he's fit. No other team in Europe can do that. They can't do that. So the point I'm making is, even if Arteta was at his best, he still won't win the Premier League because Manchester City have got a squad of players and the, and the caliber of players. They've got 17 great players. Most teams have, most teams have got eight, nine and then you've got a few good players. So as much as I'm here to criticise Arteta, I think his substitutions in the last two or three games have been really weird. They've been really, really weird. And it's made more weird by the fact that I think a key element of his evolution this season has been that his subs have been good this season. His subs this season have generally been, in my opinion, quite good. So the last couple of weeks, I don't know what he's doing. But I think no matter how much, how good he is, I just wonder if the Prem... It is tied up by the fact that there's a team at the top of the league right now that just have a level of player and the quantity of level of player that nobody else can match. We all agreed Klopp is a better manager than Arteta and he only got one Premier League title off, off of Pep. So I think as well as it's, it's important for us to critique and look at Arteta's failings and where he can do better. And again, I agree. I think his failings have been off the pitch more than on the pitch. But even if his failings were, if it was flawless on the pitch, we haven't got the squad. And I don't know if we ever will have the squad to be able to rest our two best players in the running. Who does that? Who rests their best player of the season in a running? I, I don't know who does that. So I'm not giving him a pass. I'm not, because he has made errors in this last couple of weeks. But I think it's important to re recognise the context of what we're up against. Manchester City are just, they're just, they're just something we've never seen before. And I think that he's up against a monster and the greatest manager of all time, arguably. So I think I, I cut him a little bit of slack there. So that only I'm I said that Turkish because your point was, do we give the team a little bit of slack because of their age? I think age, no, but lack of experience at this level, uh, yes, for me. Turkish, can I ask you a question? Where, where are you? Where are you at the moment with Mikhail? Then well, I'm not saying you should be just like no, no, not entertaining the question. It's a, it's a non question for me. It, it doesn't make sense that the question's even floating about. No, what, no. what whether he's good enough or not, or whether he should stay or go. No, well, well, like, for me, it's a big transfer window for him and a big next season for him. Hmm. And not, Unless, not a big six games. If it's a massive six games, and it, you know, if we crumble in the way you insinuated one might crumble, then okay, we can review that question. Yeah, that's that's you. where I am. You're, you're, you know, you're firmly on the fence at the moment. And the and reality I, I, is, I, I, yeah, I, I mean, I'm I'm a strong believer that the reason we are here is because of him, and and the, by that I mean I look at our squad and I look at our players and I match them up to the other great sides, in not not just in England, Liverpool, City, but I match them up to to European sides as well, and. I don't. I look at our squad and I think, how are we up? Like, how are we this good at times? How are we this fucking good? It's Mikel. So that that's that's why I'm like in limbo with it all, like because, mm. like, for me, why is Eddie coming off the bench again this season? Why have we got Kai Havertz? You know, 
Um, to be honest, you was rightly well. We was both right because his actual quote on the Kai Havertz was thing was um, he gives where is it? He gives us um, something very different with his quality and size. For now, he's playing in the attacking midfield position, but I'm sure throughout the season and throughout games, we're going to have options to play him in different positions. But you know, Jordan, you mentioned Man City squad. I think you've got to, when you're coming up against you know pretty flawless goal managers and teams. You know, well, Wenger had to do it with Ferguson. When there's when there's a chance, you fucking take it. Take it, yeah. yeah and yeah, I yeah. think there was a chance this season, and I yeah, think there was yeah. a chance last season. You know, and I don't know how many chances Man City give you. Yeah, you know, I agree so, with that. I agree with that. so totally, totally agree. Yeah, Absolutely. and for me, I feel like, you know, Havertz is better off the bench. Jesus is better off the bench. I think with the Vieira transfer and a few others he's got wrong, this is now the summer to make that a reality. Havertz is on the bench next season, comes on if we need a target man, if we need to change it up maybe tactically a little bit. He can offer you a few different positions and coming off the bench, he's a bit fresher. Same with Jesus. Same with maybe a Martinelli or a Saka at times because we bought a new winger in. You know, we need to... We need to just finalize this now because, in my opinion, it was meant to be finalized last summer. Declan Rice and Havertz was our Allison and Van Dyke. I think that's what it was meant to be the final pieces to the jigsaw. But so I think ask you one of the pieces didn't fit correctly. So we found another place for that piece off the board, spare piece, and we need to find that piece right and get that right this summer. So, so let me ask all three of you, Turkish first, how many players short do you think we are? Of our starting eleven in having a ready Premier League winning team. Two. James. In our starting eleven. Yeah. Because I was going to say four for the squad, but for the starting eleven. Two, but Timber returning. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And I'm not so sure about that, James, because look at look at. Um, Look at look at Jesus. I, I, a year ago, or just over a year ago, there's no way we'd be saying to him, "Oh, he's coming off the bench and all yeah. that." It was outstanding. It, the, the injury has has hampered him. I don't care what anybody says. Definitely. And 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 I'm not going to write him off yet, but I think that he needs a summer of whatever's going to happen with him um, to sort that out. But I, de I, de I definitely think we need a midfield player, a wide player. And, and, and as you say, with with with, with Timber as well, like you know, so um, I do think we need a striker as well. I I I really do think that we need a striker, and, and I'm I, and I'm not saying because we scored loads of goals and all that. I'm talking about the nitty gritty, the pressure games when you sometimes you're not playing well because of pressure and whatever. Ball goes across the box, bang, goal, and you win 1-0. And, and you think to yourself, well, how did we win that game? So, uh, so Sorry, Lee, sorry to cut you out. Three for uh, me. So if, if Arsenal is, sorry, three including Timber? Yeah. Okay, so okay, so two players to sign. So if this summer Arsenal spent £160 million on two players and that was it, would you be happy? No. Um, no, they've still got a strength for the strength. Listen, we're, we're, let's be on it. Like, I'll tell you where I'm, I'm going to criticise Mikel. Like, he's brought on Eddie in the last two games in the f three minutes and two minutes from the end. Yeah. You know what I mean? Come on. What does, that, what does that tell you? What does that tell you? Like, you know what I mean? That's, that tells me of desperation. You know what I mean? Because if you've got the, the ability, if you think you've got the confidence in, you're going to give him a little bit longer than that. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? You know, no, 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 but, no, but, no, but sorry, sorry, it's quite again, Lee, but what, my, my point is, is that if they sign the two players that you guys all want, then the, forget the squad for now, because that would relegate Kai Havertz as Daniel Yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus is Daniel I'm with you, I'm with you. I'm Do you know you. what I mean? So I'm just saying, if we spend 160 mil on two players, so a midfielder and a striker, you know what the that problem was it. is? 160. Remember, I said superstar quality. 160. Yeah, million. I'll take that. Yeah, I'll get, take it that. doesn't get you two. For me, if you're saying two players, bring me Isak and Frankie de Jong, and I'll say that's enough. You give me that this summer, I'll say, cool, let's move. Give really? me Isak and Frankie de Jong. Yeah. Well, Isak, Frankie de Jong. I know wing really in the, on the wings, we need to, and maybe I'm being a bit, but really what I'm thinking is the amount of players we have Ramsdale, Partey. Reese Nelson, Emil Smith Rowe. Um, we have a few players we can now. Eddie, we've all got to go. Zinchenko, Eddie, 
We've got we should be able to recoup easy a hundred mil from them five, six players, easy or knock off at least a good chunk of wages. So I think we could get an Isak, a Frankie De Jong profile. With Isak, I'm not saying profile because there's only one Isak. So Isak, a Frankie De Jong profile, and then maybe a winger to to compete with thing. That I, I, I'm I'm looking at it's, 250 it's, M's. It's interesting because I take I, I think we need four in our eleven. Uh, that's what I was interested to hear what you how many of you what guys think so. I think keeper and Martinelli we need to upgrade Ooh, on. Oh, keeper, you know, that's not a bad shout. You I know. think I, I would go. I, it sounds I, you wild. Know, you but... know what it is with keeper again? Football shit. What keepers <laughs> are out there? Football is shit. They're, 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 they're out there. They're out there. They're always there's, there's somebody out there. But I I, I I don't I don't dislike Raya. I, I, I fear though, we need to go again. I think we've got I to think... go again. I'd give Ray one more year. I, I don't know why. I think just because. Oh, Arteta will. Arteta I will. Be, but I, I, ho- I hope. Bothered. I hope this time next season, it's not Ray. We're talking about costing us anything. You we, know, because this is be. what I'm saying about that. That when he likes a player, he likes a player. <laughs> you know, whether it's holding in the last season or Eddie, we're just talking about now, or Ray come. Fuck all well, that. We- we were touching on Arteta mistakes and, you know, whether he's allowed to make them. Yeah, but you you can't sign six goalkeepers. Mm. I mean, I'm not even joking. Since uh, since he's arrived at the club, he, he, and, and he's, he's had three. Leno, Martinez, back to Leno, Ramsdale, Raya. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> if, if, if I'm the board and he says to me, I need another keeper, I'm telling him to jog on. But I'm just saying, me as Jordan, I, I think we, yeah, yeah it's, it's not what, don't you dare ask me for another yeah. goalkeeper. Yeah. You, know, was, you know, when you go on the criticism of Arteta, right? The goalkeeping situation is is one where I would say, yeah, you know, um, quite right. You can criticise him on that because I think that, as you say, there we've had so many goalkeepers, and it still isn't a position where I go, yeah, we we. It's not like Saliba, is it? You know, or Gabriel. It's not nailed on. And I know people will go, "Oh, you're being unfair and everything like that." I think that Raya is the better goalkeeper in the system that um, suits Arteta. But when it's game-changing saves, he's not the man. Mm. I just yeah, think yeah. the keepers are a bit like strikers. Sorry, you can kind of see the difference between a top four one and a Premier League winning one. I think with strikers, you can see a striker who's a top four. Ollie Watkins is a top four Champions League qualification striker. Um, Raya is a top four. He'd get you into the Champions League. You're talking about winning a title, winning a Premier League. Watkins and Raya, are, they're not that level for me. And there's not many that are at that level. But I think if we're going to be ruthless, I'm looking for a midfielder. I'm looking for a striker. I'm looking for a left winger. I'm looking for a goalkeeper. Those are the four areas I'm upgrading in the summer. If 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 it was me in charge, yeah, that's a great team. point. I t- do you know what? Like, and you know, Turkish probably remember it. You know, the David Seaman one was a, was a game changer. It was a game changer. He come in a little bit under the what 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 yeah, Ray yeah. is doing now. If I'll be really honest, he, he took over from a favourite goalkeeper. And, um, and and a goalkeeper had won the title, so that's a different thing. Not not one that got us into a top four, and you just knew that you, you just knew that it was upgrade. And I, and I don't think that's happened with with Ray. I really don't, and that's that's my personal thing. And I think that for me, I think he's done well. Where I've sort of changed my feeling is he is the number one now. But I look back at that game against um, Bayern Munich in a home game. We're one nil up cruising not cruising but in a very very good position and within 10 minutes because of the, what he done we're two one down and uh, um yeah and that's that's how I, that's how I feel on on that like so I think that if you want to criticize Arteta, that's one 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 area that um you can safely put his door just final line from me on this whole transfer thing is just the four we signed when I reflect on last summer I think one player we knew was 100% an upgrade to our squad. One we were pretty confident was in Timber, and the other two we weren't actually really sure why we were signing them. Mm-hmm. I think the this four, and it and by the way, it might only be three. Some might argue we need five. Whoever comes in, 
I think we have to go, we have to look at that name and go. That's it. Now, I know that Arteta's talent has actually been in signing players that we've gone, what? You know, Ben White, 50 million. And then, of course, we see it. Mm-hmm. Aaron Ramsdale, what, 24 million? And then we see it, albeit he replaces him. Um, we, I think, I, I think when people like to compare us, I think you even just referenced it there, Turkish, that Liverpool summer where they got these players in, Alisson, Fabinho, but maybe being an Arsenal fan from a distance, I don't quite remember. I remember, I seem to think when Liverpool made those signings, it was like, yeah, well done. Like, that's exactly who you needed. You needed... James, you you say Ben Ben White, I'm a massive Ben White fan. I think he's let us down in the last couple couple of big games. Really, you know, like for the cross, I didn't think he defended that very, very well. I thought he struggled on Sunday. Uh, And, you know... um, weren't the greatest in the in the first leg as well, like you know, been found, you know, at the top top level. I I, I got I, I done a thing where it was like, um, you know, as you prefer, like the Bayern Munich eleven, and 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 I put Ben White in it, you know, and 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 I'm looking at it now and going, oh, I probably made a mistake there, because but Lee, you know, even with Ben White, it goes down to I be, I believe the reports that he's been playing through injury because it's been talked about loads, and you know, plenty of journalists have talked about it. Um, why is he playing low through injury? Okay, the timber injury we couldn't have foreseen, uh, but it happened when the transfer two transfer deadline days are passed yeah, yeah. then. Um, not addressed by the club. Okay, don't know why, but whatever, fine, that's the route they chose. But Tomiasu and Zinchenko haven't been dependable in terms of their fitness. So Ben White has played more than he should. Again, it's just like poor management of the squad for me. Yep, yeah, it's a big summer, and, and we've drifted into this because like Jordan said, I think we all know why we got knocked out against Bayern Munich. I think we all get that. Um, but the big questions is about whether Arteta is going to be ruthless. Is he going to take the disappointment of this? And actually, is he going to reflect on, why did I not bring on Smith Rowe? Why did I not bring on Vieira? Like, if these are really my guys, why did I not bring them on? Like, is he, is he going to reflect on that and do something about it this summer? Because all the reports in the last few days are, they're backing him. Like, again, KSE, he is their guy. Cool. He's my guy too. I think he's everyone's guy here on this podcast. And that's great. Um, he but- is my guy at the moment. But I, I'm, I, it's the next six games for me, James. I, 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 you know, I'll back, I'm backing him up here. I'm arguing about lots of things for him. I'm, I, 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 I'm, I want him to be the man. But if he does not deliver in these next six games, for me, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with a lot of these other people. Like, you know... Um, this this may be his tr- hardest transfer window ever. Like, and, yeah. and I know that sounds crazy because we're the best we've been. We're going to have a load of money. Champions League back to back. All that's great. You could sell the project and all that. But who's the striker? Is it Osman? Is it Isak? Is it Sesko? Is it Ferguson? Is it Tony? Is it Watkins? Who's the midfielder? You mentioned Frankie de Jong. I love that. But I'll who- take him. I got them a little, but you had them, but who, otherwise you ain't getting a Pedri, you ain't getting a Gavi, you ain't getting a Camavinga, you ain't getting a. I I don't know, like who who is so who's the guy? This is I still I'm still on this older guard moves to eight thing and, and, yes. and get get a work get a words get a words for ten if if if, yeah. if Man City or Masiala get a words for ten. I'm on that. You know? he needs help, older guard. He needs another I feel like player the... like him. I feel like older older guard and Xhaka are completely different players, but older guard doing what Xhaka did in the last season, in the final season, coming into the box on that left hand side, his left foot across the across. They're, they're not actually off. that different. They're, they're not as different as they're I think not. you maybe think they are. You know, they're actually they're more older guard than... more technically gifted, hundred yes, percent. I yes, mean, in yes. terms of the way they they move about and whatnot, yeah. I feel like older guard could easy, and then older guard with Martinelli then start you know form something. Then you'd have a. We... We're dream- I'm so, dreaming anyway. We, we, sorry, we haven't got time to go into it till now, but I think we have to at some point have a chat about Saka as well. Um, because uh, he's what he's probably our best player, one of our top two, three players. And the time to talk about Saka as an established England international man and his performance level needs to be had at some point. Now, we can talk about that alongside possible injuries and overplaying, which I think is fair. But at some point, maybe it's an end of the season thing. And I love Saka. 
I love Saka. Like, why, why can't you just say he's had a shocker? Why? Why can't you just say he's had? Like, because, like, because, because, because I think he had a shocker on 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 Wednesday. I don't know why he can't just say it. Like, everybody's got to try and stick up for him. It's not. It, it's not for me so much about him having a shocker in one game. It's more about the guy that we thought was going to be our star boy at the back end of the season, the business part of the season. Is not doing it. I know he scored the first goal against Bayern Munich, and the first goal was the most important goal in that sense. So I, I'm not saying he's he's done. I just I hold him in a, to a very very high standard, maybe too high. Maybe I'm expecting too much from him. But I think at some point we've got to have a chat about because I'm hard on Martinelli. I'm I'm hard on other, but you know we give it to other players. No one gets a pass, even our favourites. Everyone's got to be scrutinised now. But going to the next level, is Saka the guy? And that's book. that's not his fault. That you know, that's my thing about it. you know the, the the expectation and pressure put on him. Um, he, he you know he doesn't flaunt himself about humble, quiet. You know he does his he does his thing off the pitch, and he doesn't look for. So it's it's the fan base's fault. You know when when you read this is what I mean about taking a step back at a time like now when we're not involved in the emotional roller coaster, winning back to back, thinking the titles on the. Now we you know hit a bump in the road. Saka De Bruyne. You can't put them in the same sentence. No. Saka Salah, you can't put them in the same sentence. No way. Saka Van Dyke, you can't put them in the same sentence. They, they, these are Saka Rodri. You can't. These are players for the opposition that are elite, elite footballers. And they are the ones more often than not relied upon. But if they don't show up, then maybe a Foden steps in and shows up or Bernardo mm. Silva steps in and shows up because the, the spotlight ain't on them. But they can, the supporting cast then can come in and do their thing. With us, the spotlight is Saka. I put, on, it, on him. Turkish, I put him in, you say that he's not. I put him in at their age, right? Saka is better than any of them Fair. at their age, right? Fair. And that's Probably the difference. Is. That's the thing at the moment that we still don't. He's 22 years of age, he's still mm -hmm. developing. Martinelli is still developing as uh, you know they're not the finished article these which, Lee, these which is which is which is why it's essential essential going back to this links to our last conversation that this summer we get those two or three players that to can help to help them along and if we, if we got a De Jong and we got a um I don't know an, an, an Isak for example the pressure is off Saka then to be the guy I know we've got other superstars. We've got yeah, because guys. like Foden, Foden's never been the guy. No, he's Foden's never, had to be. never been the guy. Yeah, you know, what I mean, when he was twenty-two, he was never the guy. He's now twenty. I think he's a little bit older than than um, Saka, if, I, if I'm right. But, but is he about a year older than Saka? But what he's done, yeah, he's yeah. been been push, just pushed up, lovely, and now he's f blossoming. But Saka has been. Chucked in at the deep end, deep end, deep end. No, oh, he's the one. He's the one. He's the one. And when he's not not doing it, you know, oh, he's no Salah. Well, Mo Salah was and not even making it at Chelsea at his age. Not making it. At, you know, having to go to Italy to come back in it. You know, these these kids, the Sackers and the Martinellis. I'm telling you that now are gold players. They, they are, but they're not going to take you to the to it. On their own, they're going to need help. I don't bring him up. Who I'm looking at to take us somewhere, Declan Rice. And I'm not just putting it on him. What I'm saying is, he's at the age, he's of the character, he's of the mold. That if we're going to attach our, our belief that a leader is going to take us, because even older God, I'd say he's a good captain, but I mean, there's something about Declan Rice that I'd say, I think you're going to have to spearhead or lead this team and the players that come in along the way with you you might need that superstar character that out of the box might come in that Arteta doesn't sit well with but Declan Rice needs to be that guy that knits it together because I feel like you need that Pep Guardiola over his years he brought characters and personalities he didn't quite like some of them didn't work out some of them did work out you've got to test yourself and I think now comes the time where the reality is and one of the reasons Declan Rice signed for Arsenal right yeah is because of the potential of Saka, the potential of Martinelli, and the potential of a of a Saliba and those sort of guys, you know what I mean? Like and that that can't be lost. You know what I mean? Like you know, he's not gone to I don't know Manchester City because he might have actually gone there. Going well, De Bruyne is on his way out. Some so that this is the, the, the 
this is that we've got these players that are going to come into their prime. I don't know, but I, I, I do think that we've got to just just try and dampen the expectations of these these guys a little bit. Like you know, what I mean, they're still not developed and nowhere near at the where I expect them to be in two three years time. And that's why, Lee, going back to it full circle, someone like Havertz coming in at the age he's coming in, which is moving into mid-20s, he is meant to be someone that takes that pressure away. Yes, like yes. Or a martyr. Go down that route. Yes. Not the guy that fucking creates space every other week. Do you know what I mean? But let's not get back into that. Yeah. So I, 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 I agree. Space. Respect space. Um, all right. Well, you know what? We've kind of touched in on Wolves by talking about how important things are, how, you know, we can't afford to drop points. James, smile. I'm laughing because that was a very, that was a very 2 a.m. conversation, wasn't it? <laughs> like, like. It was a bit too meaning, considered. <laughs> what is the meaning of Arsenal? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know that end of the night kebab where you just turn to your mate and <laughs> You asked it's not been the greatest night, but the kebab's all right. Like, you, know I mean? you, just, you just think that's the moment to really ask the, the big one. You know, you know man. Well, what are we doing here, James? What, what, you know, yeah. who, who put us here? <laughs> like, <laughs> them, them ones. Like, do you really matter? Really? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, oh, but you know what? That's where we are. That's 10 past two in the morning, people. If you don't hit the like button right now, then yeah, you're out of order. Unsubscribe to leave us because I and don't know sorry, what you're doing. And sorry, James, because you know what it is? Our viewers and listeners here, they've heard all the noise from all the other Arsenal fans ranting and raving and losing their head. But we're the considered podcast. We're the ones that, you know, we give you a little bit of a, a bit of a considered intellectual, thoughtful perspective on the Arsenal football club. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you this. I'm I'm right now, I will not be like this <laughs> if we don't beat Wolves. I am telling you that now. My perspective will change if we do not beat Wolves. This is this is a make or break. That'll be a fun podcast. Yeah, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I mean it like you know what I mean. Like uh, I might even have a go at Kai Everts if we don't win. <laughs> 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 yeah. The day you have to go out. Right. Right. Stay tuned for that one, folks. <laughs> That'll be something. <laughs> um, uh, Wolves. There's not much to say, is there? I mean, we, we go. Just, uh, just got to get the job done, sir. Just got to get the job guys. done. Saka Martinelli, either side of Havertz, I'm guessing. Jorginho back in the midfield, or is it Partey now? I think... I it's, 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 it's very interesting. The 11's going to be... Really, you know, you guys will be doing the start at 11. I, me, I, me and James done it already, and, and me and James agreed on a, on a front on, what's, your team? Go on, what's your team? Well, Trossard was up top. Um, Jesus was on the right, and Martinelli was on the left in terms of the front three. Yeah, that, that's my team. Sackers the rest. I would that um, front three, yeah. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be pissed at that front three. I don't think Jorginho can play. This game Partey worries me. I think Partey's in because Wolves, one thing about Wolves is that they're a really they're a running team. They, they, yeah. They've got lots of runners um in, in their team. And I just think that this is the game where Jorginho will get run over. So I, I wouldn't personally play Jorginho. No, no, I, I just think they've got no, lots of like athletic. But you know what I mean. <laughs> and in this game you'll get run over. Running over. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So I, I don't think this is a game for Jorginho personally. I think you need Partey to bring in now. I will say point. every time I think this of Jorginho, he he just uses this and avoids. Yeah. It's it. true. It's, it's that, that is true. That is true. That is true. Uh, yeah. You Probably know, good. really, Goretzka, Lima, and Musiala should have run all over Jorginho in both legs, and I don't feel they did. I thought, they dominated um, it. But they they won the battle. They I won the battle. Did. Overrunning. No, I don't think that they that it was a massacre. Yeah. No, I, you say that. I, I, I don't think Jorginho looked out of his depth. I thought really. No, no, I, I don't know. I didn't think he did. I, I, so I just said I just think that they won the yeah. battle in there. I think over the two over the two games. Oh, as a midfield collective, you mean? Yeah. yeah midfield be armed. Yeah. Oh, right. Fine. I see. I, I thought Jorginho looked the only one who. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think, think he's done okay. I've seen he's done okay. Show confidence in tight spaces. Um. I've got Joe Jenny in my side. I go, I I'd go party though. I would, and and it's based oh, on. I, I, I'm going to argue that. And everything else he... picks itself, apart from Zinchenko, who I'm assuming everyone doesn't put in the starting lineup, and goes with Tommy Asu. Yeah, Zinchenko's still going to play football this season. I do think. Yeah, I, I think Zinchenko will come in in this game. It wouldn't should, surprise. Should, should he? Should he play again this season? Good luck, to probably. Mikel if he does. 
I don't see why he should. We've got what yeah, six I games left. He, why does he? I don't see unless anybody's. We need that little bit of um stuff in midfield for this game. Like, and I'll tell you what, Tommy Asu, <laughs> he, he, he put his body and everything on the line on that game. I don't know if he'd be able to go another game, but we'll wait and see. It, has, has, the, has the last few weeks like made it just so abundantly clear why we needed Timber? You know, most of the season I've I've sort yeah. of gone Timber would have been great to have. But in the last few weeks, where I saw hmm. I saw Kivio, you know, basically struggle against Bayern because he's not a left back. So I thought oh, we we need Tommy. But then Zinchenko starts. Like, okay, well we've got his quality on the ball, but he makes a load of errors because he's just Zinchenkoing. But, um, and then we but, go. Okay, we'll play Tommy for Bayern. And then we lost something on the ball. And I thought, Timber. Timber does all these things. He's a centre-back. He's a full-back. He's good on the ball. He's very good defensively. He's he's the answer. My, 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 my frustration with, with Zinchenko, because I think everyone knows by now that he's like my new Xhaka. I just, I've just got no time for him at all. But my frustration with, with Zinchenko is, isn't even that defensively he's a liability. It's the fact that we talk about him on the ball and coming into midfield. He's not done that this season. He's not done that this season from what I've seen. So the, the thing that yes. he's meant to be good at, he's not doing. So I'm like, you're crap defensively and offensively you're not doing, you're not coming to midfield. What are you bringing to the party? Sorry. So I just, I actually, I actually he, think he annoys me so a, much. I actually think the lack of a proper midfield option there has also hurt him, but that's yeah. making... Oh, I think it's hurt Martin, Martin Elliott as well, that old left side. Yeah. yeah, the left, all season of the left has not functioned. Do you know when it functioned fun best? Fabio Vieira. Yeah, Let me bring up the prediction table. Lee, the only one to predict the Bayern win, but Lee also the only one to be late to the show today. Yeah, so right, right, plus yeah. one, minus one, as is. Yeah, it's out of it, like yeah, you know, I mean, like, out of all the like, you know. I was here at nine o'clock. <laughs> nine, Why? <laughs> nine o'clock. Yeah, I was Why? here three weeks ago. Though, but... <laughs> yeah. Why was you here at nine? Well, like I said in the thing at nine o'clock, I changed everything around for nine o'clock. You know what I mean? Like that. <laughs> no one asked you to. Yeah, that, was, that, was, that was at eight o'clock. <laughs> you can allow that after I've stuck up for you in the car. You can allow that. You know, these two scumbags, are you going to allow that? Like, you know, what, you know what? I'm backing Lee on this one. Hold on, hold on. Can I say I'm backing Lee on this one because I can't okay. win the league anyway now. So I'm not going to be loyal. Can I say something just to the people out there? Yeah, the people out there. Lee said he was here at nine. I didn't send the link to the group to nine thirty six. No, I said on the on the um <laughs> on the chat. I'll, I'll, Lee, help I'll, me out here, mate. Help me out here. Thank everything, like you know what I mean. I'll, 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 I'll screenshot it and like at the end of the day, like <laughs> could have been anyway. The actual um, WhatsApp was on the group today was a joke. Uh, I've got to do me. I've got to do me. Uh, this at nine o'clock. I can, oh, uh, one a.m. I can do, but it feels like a bit crazy late, you know what I mean? You know? Was that me or James? Oh, right. Who's no, that's James. Oh, James like, I mean, like, oh, nine, oh, nine is better for me. <laughs> nine is better for me. This is it. Don't think James can do that. I don't know why Turkish is answering for him, but there you go. <laughs> you know I mean? So there you go. Okay, let's do it. That's enthusiastic from, from Jordan. Right? James comes in. Jordan Lee... Let's do 9 p.m. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, okay. Because yeah. 1 a.m., this is a typical James uh, message, because 1 a.m.s are ridiculous for people. <laughs> okay, ridiculous. I actually will. I'll change it. I'll change it. I, I said, this is what I'll say. I, I can't do 9, but I'll try and change it. I can do it. Oh, cool. Oh, let's do 1 a.m. Like, fuck Lee up. Go on, this <laughs> <laughs> not how it went, but it's not. he he re lied like the last five messages. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Made up the last five. They were fucking on. <laughs> he said, "Oh, okay." Um, anyway, <laughs> prediction. Imagine oh. we can still laugh at the end of this pod. That's the special <laughs> thing about this pod. Um, we can still Ooh. laugh. I'm coming off the back of the big and six. Turkish, oh. What's this one? I'm on. Uh, what's all that about? Like, you know what I mean, I'm on. I'm on. I'm on the fucking stream, isn't it? I'm on. Ah, right, like, you know what I mean? So, I just right. want to, I'm on. I thought I was in the wrong group for a minute. <laughs> what did you do? What, what, at, 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 at 12.57, what did you meant by I'm on? Yeah. When the previous message was a link, what have you possibly been talking about? 
Luke was at, uh, at nine thirty-five. I got work in the morning, guys. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> if I finish the big six early, then I'll give everyone a heads up. And that was my heads up. I'm on. Yeah. Two minutes yeah. to one. I'm on. Yeah. Well, what great heads up that is, isn't it? Like, yeah? I mean, like, yeah. Me, do you still type the codes in? Do you still type the? <laughs> yes, you fucking well know that I do. That's why I was going to be late because I, what I'm going to be really on? honest with you. I, I was pressing I instead of J. You know what I mean? So I had to take a photo of it and then enlarge it, didn't I? Like, you know, you, you bunch of wankers. You know what I mean? Like, no? I think you do it deliberately. I'll tell you what, we'll put a J instead of an I. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's a legend, man. He's actually a legend. Um well, it's hard for that point back in Bayern Munich. I want that point, right? You know I, mean? I actually I actually think we've got a big up Lee, right? Because and this is why I was saying one AM's crazy late. The guy watched Arsenal get knocked out of the Champions League, drove to Frankfurt. Got on a flight. This was straight. If it had gone to extra time, basically, you'd miss the flight, right? Yeah. Flight back. Then Robbie's pulled him in to sit next to Julian on Invincibles for another hour in the office. Yeah. And then he stayed up till what? 2.20am 2, 2 a.m. to do his podcast. Yeah. Well, uh, that's it. thank you, James. And Did I can tell you this now, like, while sorry. we're on it, a little bit of a, um, <laughs> a little bit of a reveal, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and a big up to Robbie because Robbie comes straight into the office as well, like you know. Uh, Julian was talking, and 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 uh, Robbie went, <laughs> right, cut, cut, let's start again, like you know, like, he's fallen asleep. <laughs> he's gone. He, he just has gone. He's out with went, we went, you're all right, Rob. Like you know, I mean, like. I'll never, I'll never forget when um, Robbie was on DR Sports with Troops and X, who were getting really into WrestleMania. It was like a 2 a.m. watch along, and he spends the whole watch along just struggling. <laughs> and the other two are being peak troops and expressions, <laughs> loving every minute. Probably the loudest people in the building in London. And uh, I remember Robbie that. Just could not, could not bear <laughs> and keep himself. He just couldn't do it. He ain't done the rest. Of the, he ain't done the rest in live since. <laughs> so James you've just given a, a a monologue about Lee and how much you respect him doing this but you're the you was the person to also you know vote for the point to be knocked off first so he's worried oh, isn't he I, I can see he's worried about it he's that. worried no, no no I mean big up to him but he was late so yeah point off how long was it late? I was only about a minute late surely he was a minute I think it was two oh, He's no threat you're to my title. You, you want to give him <laughs> no, 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 no. Give me, give me his point back. Give me his point back. Thank Can you me, very much, Jordan. Thank you. I think, for there exceptional circumstances, I will allow it. Thank you very much, James. And there you go, Lee. It's updated. I can't see anyway. I have left it off. Yeah. <laughs> Four points. Man, man. Thank you very much, man. Let me take a screenshot. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's do predictions, James. Oh um, no! <laughs> Wolves away. Uh, two 0 Two 0 win. Two 0 I want us to flex and show everyone. We're not a bad team and we haven't been playing that badly and just basically tell everyone to shut the F up. That's what I want us to do on Sunday, yeah. Saturday night. I'm with you on that. 3 1. Lee. I was going to go 2 0. Um, but I, I need the points. Um, let's go in between you two then and go 3 0. Um, 2 0 Wolves. <clears throat> I think I think I, I'm worried. This this game worries me. It does, and what worries me even more is that Mikel it, 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 I'm just being I'm just being honest. And what worries me more is that well, it, I'll, it, I'll, it, I'll get you. Yeah, yeah. It could be Chelsea that puts a nail on the coffin. These two games are really big. We play two games before City play again, so we have to win these two games. But I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not confident. We, start, we, we started this pod with Jordan saying get behind the boys and support. I know, I know, I know. And we end it with two no two, rules. Two things can be true, you know. I, I can support the boys, but also feel like we're not going to win. <laughs> I think you get behind Netflix a lot better. Oh, shut <laughs> up. Um, uh, that's all the predictions. Jordan's gone 2 0 Wolves. James has gone 2 0 Arsenal. Lee's gone 3 0. I've gone 3 1. Let us know yours. 
Comment section below. Comment section below. Comments of the day. Everyone ready? Yeah. 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 Cool. Can I just yeah. say before we go, uh, big up to Ryan, who I met on the train today. Um, well, our story. editor. Yeah. No, 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 no. You know, by the way, what, what, what a job he does, I tell you. Like, you know, I've got to say, when you go on these trips, the, the, the camera guys, the they, they work tremendously hard, tremendously hard. No, they um, actually do. They uh, do. It's, it's incredible what they do because it's like. And you made uh, him drive. Well, I don't know, listen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tremendous what they did. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we're at 2 a.m. drive. You don't mind, do you, right? Yeah, they made him try. Vlogging while know. driving. Sort of, <laughs> they did it like he's edited, like, out. you know, he's kept up all night. You know, he, he's doing like, he I would it. say, in a 24 hour day, he's probably doing 19 hours work. Yeah, and they made him drive. And what we, we have That's a little brutal. pack, we have a little pack that uh, who's ever in the front has to stay awake because it's, you know, you're. To help guide you through, like the sat nav, you know, because you see you're on the wrong side of the road and all that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, Robbie was in there and he was asleep within two minutes. <laughs> no one's said anything. You know, you know what? And we was all glad he got out of the back, you know. <laughs> you know poor old Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. None of but you right, yeah, he, 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 he travels to um, Switzerland a lot uh, for work, and uh, he was saying, like, you know, um, how, how much he enjoys. Uh, Listening to the Forever Arsenal and you know doing that and he says like um, and no, so I pick up to him like he really enjoys that the four of us doing this so it's really nice when you hear people say that and it like you know that it gets me through the the travelling and everything like that so yeah yeah Man. yeah big up Ryan but I've got I've got work in a few hours so can we do oh right, yeah sorry sorry like you know. uh, I've gone for this one like how is Lee saying Shinchenko is the scapegoat yet he's always doing the same with Raya Raya has the most clean sheets miles better penalty stats, I don't know, you know, I mean, compared to Ramsdale. And it's all far, all far from the problem we have this season, like, you know, yeah. Yeah, so um, I, I agree with that, like, you know, but sometimes uh, the defence do help with clean sheets. Just want to say that, like, you know, so. Uh, yeah, I uh, I like Shinchenko. I haven't got nothing against Raya. But there you go. Fair enough. He's up next. Open. All right, I've got, um, I've got a few. Uh, Taken from a few different. Well, hurry up! The children's got to go to bed. Yeah. This is from the. I got one from the Dragons Den YouTube channel comment section. Um, Strictly come dancing Reddit as well. That's a few good ones in there. Um, <laughs> all right, mate. All right. This one. Uh, now, do you know what? There's one from Jack Hardy. That I think someone else is going to read, so I'll save that. Um, Matt Wilmot says. James's face when Lee winds up into one of his rants is priceless. <laughs> he doesn't know where to look. I didn't realize I was doing it. <laughs> you know when you know when Lee is because sort of somehow the laptop gets closer. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he's just, oh, just... <laughs> yeah. Why I order? <laughs> I got, I, I... Oh. Was him, he still come around the other day. He used the says, What's all this spit doing on the screen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we lost 2 0 to Villa. Fuck's why, why is my laptop wet? We're <laughs> 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 at the Champions League. <laughs> all right, I'll go one. next. Uh, go, go on, go on. My one's from Doris, short but sweet. Finally understand why Turkish always looks good in the thumbnails. Thought he was just the most photogenic out of the four. <laughs> well, oh, you yeah, to control it, yeah, he does it. <laughs> yeah, he always puts a good one of himself up. Yeah, it does. Yeah, you, Jordan, you piss off. Seriously, you piss off. <laughs> I tell you all the time, yeah, the logo's in the middle of the screen, yeah. Make sure you're away from it, and then you do most of the show like this. <laughs> The logos just I'm, I'm, I'm like that. <laughs> oh, give yourself some space. I gotta zoom right. into your face every week. All right, it's okay. So that's I'm central now. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah. <laughs> One hour and twenty-four minutes in is a good time to address it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go on, Jordan. You got um, to work on uh, yeah, my, my one is um, on Lee as well. Um, when Lee goes on his rant, it reminds me of that one school teacher when they've just had enough and switches on the students. And it's so true. It's so yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> I love that there. one. Big up Lee, man. Thank you very much. Yeah. Was, was, that, was that Jack's one, James? No. Have you got it? 
He mm. went, uh, Jack Hardy said, Jordan quietly spending the first 10 minutes watching the highlights in the background before joining the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> just sort of sat there, just with his phone. Lee's that's, making good points. He's going, that's a, that's a great, that's a great <laughs> about about 10 minutes before, before Turkish that's, asked me what I think. That's, that's defamation of character. That is not true. I remember someone mm. mentioned that, that, that thing you got in the background there. I don't know what I don't know what you call it, but I, I used to Rush Hour was my favorite movie. One of oh, the yeah, 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 yeah. I remember yeah. coming about that one day as well. It's because my washing's in the background, so I just thought that doesn't look good. Yeah, nice, it's nice feng shui. Feng shui, feng shui. Feng shui indeed. Yeah, yeah. And this, and this is... On that note, two twenty nine in the morning, people. Love yeah. for the love. Hit the like button. Thousand likes, nice and early. Hopefully you enjoy. <laughs> we'll be back after walls, and hopefully you're smiling. And forgetting about the last few fixtures because that's all we can do, people. Hope for the best. Fingers crossed we win the rest of our games. I think we win the league because I think City will drop points in at least one game. Unfortunately, I think we drop points too. We will be there. We will be there. <laughs>